round of applause for Yifei and his talk about Nixos uh, and Tailscale. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully everyone had a nice lunch. Okay, this, um, a, little about, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Inria, and um, this is my side project. And it's uh, not my actual research, but they are funding my trip here, so I have to put the logos there. <laughs> And um, I got asked why, why are you doing this? And um, free will, <laughs> okay, here I am. And uh, a little refresher, uh, what's a routing daemon? It's a, it's a software that implements routing protocols and uh, exchange routing information with other routers and maintain a routing table. And uh, in this specific talk, I'm using BIRD. Um, BIRD is a, a recursive acronym for BIRD Internet Routing Daemon. And uh, what's the problem? The problem we have is the um, BERT configuration uh, in Nexus module is text only. It's kind of hard to maintain and um, kind of hard to uh, compose with other services and reuse on um, different servers if you reuse a lot of um, the same configurations. And the solution here is parameterize the text-based configuration with Nix OS options. And a little prerequisite, it'd be nice you get, if you know um, Nix and NixOS and some networking knowledge like systemd, networkd, NF tables, but um, IP tables also fine, and um, BIRD and Tailscale. Tailscale here is um, only used for internal routing, and uh, you guys will know in a little bit. So a little background information, the internet gets to work because um, Companies and uh, individuals get resources from RIRs, and um, they set up running security and um, import-export policies, and had on um, upstreams and peers. Then add the announced IP address, uh, announced addresses to their interfaces, and then they are pingable. To get resources, usually you would go through uh, RIRs, which means regional internet uh, registries. There are five of them. Or you can get, um, get it from RI, LIR, means a local internet registry. And um, for IP addresses, you can either get a direct assignment. There is a wait list for IPv4 right now. And um, V6, they're just giving it out for free, a lot of them. And um, for also, you can go with a third party. You can buy it or rent it and for um, quite expensive. And, or if you don't want to... Um, do the real routing stuff, you can go with DN42 or other um, experimental networks. For, to set up routing, routing security, there are two sides. One is the um, RPKI stuff. You add ROA objects, which means uh, route, route origination authorizations, which means which um, ASN can announce which prefixes. And they're based on um, X509 chain of trust. And IRR is a query language, and you add IRR objects into uh, trusted databases like um, NTT, RADB. Yeah, that's simple. But you have to do it. <laughs> and next up is getting connected. You need either need a physical presence in a data center like HE, Cogent, or Equinix, or you can go with um, VPS providers uh, that provides BGP sessions for a fee or for free. Um, usually, there are quite a lot of them, and there is a, a list of it on bgp.services website. Or you can go with any VPS and use a virtual internet exchange or transit providers, and then you set up a direct connection to their router. And um, you can go with a lot of options. And the next step is going live. You have to set up BGP sessions with your upstream and get routes from the upstream. To There are Multiple options, you can go with the default routes, they only send you two routes, the default for V4 and V6, and, or you can go with a full table, that's usually not necessary and it's a lot of memory, and it usually takes around 250 megs for uh, 1 million V4 routes and 250k V6 routes, and um, it may be 
the RAM, the RAM usage may be smaller or larger depending on which routing daemon you go with, like FFR or any other stuff. And um, you have to set up routing policies, like import export policies from your side or you're inputting from upstreams and filtering. And if you don't want everything from upstream unfiltered, you can set up um, robot filtering, you can set up RI, um, IRR filtering and stuff, or some custom policies as well. And then you add the address that's within the prefix you announced to a, either a virtual interface or a uh, physical interface. And uh, the implementation for this is um, Nixos modules, just Nixos modules. And um, for IPKI stuff, we define an option uh, under the router umbrella, and then you have rpki.validators. And in theory, you can also add IRR um, filters in here, but not done yet. And um, this is um, simply done by providing an ID for generating the name and the remote and port number for the validator. And um, you also can specify the retry, refresh, and expiration time for the protocol, the RPKI protocol inside BERT routing daemon. And this is the actual implementation. It's basically using Nix as a templating engine. You take the configuration you have and generate a blob of text. And the library function we're going with is the uh, concat map string separation uh, separator. And then you loop through each of the validators and add two, space, two sp um, end lines at uh, the end. And then set up the remote and port and the retry options and refresh and expire stuff in there. This is the uh, stuff you generate if you uh, use IPv6 based stuff. And you also get a, a filter for free. This is not customizable for now, except for the name. And you can refer to this filter in your um, later configurations. For example, if you want to use it in um, a stack, import export filter, or you can use it in the BGP session configurations. And the kernel protocol is used to export routes to the kernel. And um, for me, I'm using a very small VPS. It's, it only has a one gig RAM. If I have a full copy of the uh, routing table with from, from BERT and also I export it to kernel, it just blows up, can do that. So you can also go with manually adding routes um, with networking configurations in the Nixos options. Or you can uh, add some scripts like uh, inside the uh, activation process or network uh, local setup um, target. And static routes is used for uh, non-dynamic routing options you want to get into the, the routing daemon. And in this example, we are using the RFC um, IP address space for this. It's very nice. If you guys are giving talk on any of the BGP stuff, you should use the RFC uh, documented uh, v4 and v6 or prefixes. And um, in here, it's also using its implementa implementation using the concat map string separator. For BGP sessions, this is the part that gets uh, interesting. Uh, you get a list of attri attribute sets where it contains the name for the session and the password for um, configuration validation and um, the type of the session. You can either have um, v4, v6, or you can generate both in one blob. And the model protocol extension can also be configured in here. You can. Um, expose your v6 routes over a v4 session or a v4, v4 routes over a uh, v6 session. Both will work. And then the neighbor configuration, the, their ADSNs and um, router IP addresses, and then your import and export policies. And now you've set up the uh, BGP sessions. And you just need to add the address to an interface so you can get connected to the internet. And um, for here, I'm using a virtual interface for ease of management. And I'm using the dummy kernel module. And set the forwarding to true. And uh, disable the manage foreign routes in systemd kernel configurations. If I don't set this, 
Um, if you do export routes to kernel, it will be wiped if you don't set it to false. And um, this is the configuration for the dummy interface. It's the name, the kind, and the addresses and routing policies in there. And this is the place where you can get to add the addresses you declared onto the dummy interface. The benefits you get is, uh, use it from using this module is you get parametricity. Um, for example, in here, you can uh, enable or disable configurations based on the router address you've um, added to your router, to your server. And the question now is, what if you have multiple upstreams? And if you have two servers, two different servers with two different upstreams, and you don't set up internal routing policies, your routes expert from one side won't be reachable from the other. So this graph shows that if this node is um, announcing this block with address 100 in here, 200 in here, and clients on this side will see 100 but will not be able to reach 200 because these two nodes don't know how to communicate with each other. And the solution here is tail scale. And we are using the tail scale subnet router feature so that they can establish a um, direct connection between them. It's tunnel tunneling. And um, how tail, tail scale works is they have a coordination server. And when each server goes online and it contacts the the coordination server, and so that they can help the two servers or more servers you own to create a mesh connection, what mesh wire guard connection in there. And um, why you get this is um, anycast. And what anycast is, um, you can use the exact same IP address on two different machines, and then. A client's accessing the IP address will get the lowest possible latency based on the BGP infrastructure in here. And um, many providers already use this. GitHub uh, pages, Cloudflare, and Google, they all use this. It's nice. And it's mostly common in CDN and, and uh, serving static content. And uh, what I've learned from this is uh, I don't really like sitting setting up NAT, and it's pretty hard to debug, and we should all use IPv6 if possible. <laughs> um, it also, it's really easy to set up a looking glass with NixOS. You just need to specify the, um, the socket, the Linux socket on your uh, machine, and then just pass, the, pass it to NixLG, the uh, BERT LG. Uh, next to us option, and then you get a website for free. It's pretty nice. Or you can um, export the full table to bgp.tools or other network operator groups. They all serve that for free. It's pretty nice. And um, when debugging, I found these tools pretty helpful and uh, really nice. And uh, shout out to pin.sx. Uh, they have a very nice website. have uh, about 100 nodes, and you can do pin and MTR directly and choose very nice UI. And um, one other problem I had with TailScale is they eat the entire CGNAT range. If you, you want to peer with someone over a virtual link, and uh, they happen to use a IPv4 address on the CGNAT range, you won't get traffic through it. So the solution here is either you guys um, set up the uh, VXDAN over IPv6 addresses and don't use um, IPv4 entirely, and then do the multi protocol to route your to send your v4 routes to the v v6 session then it will work that telescope and uh there has been a long standing issue there since 2021 it's still not resolved so <laughs> hope that it get fixed pretty soon <laughs> and as a closing remark it's possible to run your own validator like specifically IRR ones and um, I also plan to upstream my contribution in this project to Nix packages. And um, that's about it. I'll take questions.
Thank you for the talk. Are there any questions? We have two mics now, so we should be faster. Yeah, thank you for the talk. I have sort of a bizarre question. So since you are modifying services.bird, as far as I'm getting in your module, do you consider adding, adding other dynamic routing protocols, like link state protocols, let's say, or uh, something else at least, or, or maybe RIP as a metric base? So um, I have a alpha implementation, which I plan to implement all the bird protocols in there. And there you go. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh. I didn't quite get uh, why you need the tail scale at all if you can uh, if you have your bird uh, already set up like that's the most complex part that tail scale usually does for you because you don't want to do the routing but you could just have a regular wire guard with bird running and uh, then do IP packet forwarding. Uh, I don't see why the tail scale here is necessary. Yeah. So you for sure can use other uh, modules like wire guard, VXM, or whatever you want. And uh, tail scale is just used here because it's simple. It's very simple and easy to use for me. And um, if you want to add another node to your system, and um, you don't want the node to um, have an upstream, so with TailScale, you can just use the um, subnet router feature to advertise that specific address and add a dummy interface on that machine. So all the traffic will go through that machine and can be reachable via the internet. It's convenient for me. I see. Yeah. No? Then thank you again for the great talk. For give him a round of thank applause. You.